we just worked the sound pressure example, uh, which converted from a pressure in Pascal's to a decibel level. And it involved using a logarithmic function. And so one of the things we didn't do because it didn't ask us how to plot it, but if we wanted to do that, you might see a graph where this is P and this is L of P. Um, and what the function would look somewhat like would be this and then as you get into these big ones it takes a lot of change in pressure to get a change in L because of it being taken the log of it. It kind of levels up. Um, basically remember it's the opposite of what we would think of happening with an exponential. An exponential as you get over here things go up really rapidly with a logarithmic they're going to slow down. They're going to be really rapid here at the beginning slow down. So what you would often see people do instead of trying to plot this because if you do that once you get out to this area it becomes really tough to kind of tell differences. You'll see you'll see graphs that use a kind of logarithmic scale to plot the graph. In other words, instead of this being 10, 20, 30, etc., they'll use a logarithmic where this is 1, this is 10, or 10 to the 1, this is the same as 10 to the 0, this is 100, which is 10 squared, 10 to the cubed, 10 to the 4th. And if we'd done that with the graph, sorry, it's kind of falling off the page, what we would see is based on these points this is going to look basically like a straight line because it's every time we go by another factor of 10 our logarithmic part which I'll just use down here since you can't see the entire equation up there our logarithmic part goes up by 1 every time we raise a full power on this so every time this raises 1 in this case that will raise by 20 um, and that's what we see there so that's just an interesting thing that kind of comes out from graphing.